one time there was a survey, and it was the most powerful people in China. And it was Mao Zedong, Chairman Deng, one other person, and Yu Sai Khan. Hello, I'm Yu Sai Khan. Hello, I'm Yu Sai Khan. 各位观众，我是金宇熙。各位观众，我是金宇熙。你好，尤赛。哦，你好，哥们。你好 ，everybody. Beauty, brains, success. She's a great humanitarian. Elegant. She's a symbol of beauty. She's a symbol of entrepreneurship. Workaholic. So alive. She's so electric. She comes in like a fresh air and then broad color. Loves what she does. She's humble. She's irrepressible. She was the face of a country. Absolutely, stunningly energetic. She's a unique Chinese American who straddles both sides of the equation. She's a woman of all four seasons. Yusai, you came to New York from Hong Kong in the early 70s, and pretty soon you had the idea of starting a television program for American viewers looking at Asia. Hello, I'm Yusai Khan. Welcome to Looking East. What gave you the idea to do that? Actually, the idea sort of grew out of nowhere. It was the first attempt ever to introduce Asia to America. There's an old Chinese saying. You are not a hero unless you have been to the Great Wall. In 1984, when the People's Republic was celebrating its 35th anniversary and had a huge parade that it was planning, public television wanted to cover that parade live. It was the first joint venture between China and the United States. They were really paying attention to it. And I was on camera. Deng Xiaoping's path to power is a long one. And the Chinese leadership, they said, wow, we know this woman who actually know something about China. And that's when they asked me to do this production of a show called One World. As I remember, I was watching, of course, at home. I was in high school, I remember. Something struck me that, wow, we could do this. Her programs opened a window through which we could be as pretty as she was. Uh, we could see what the outside world was like and what was going on there. It was something really refreshing. How many people in China watch your program? 400 million Chinese. 400 million viewers. You serious? Very. Yeah. China didn't have a beauty culture at all. With a colorless society at that time, for sure it's going to open itself to the rest of the world. For sure makeup is going to be part of their lives. It's, using a lipstick is like brushing teeth. Lipsticks. I designed nine colors. I really have to start a, a revolution there. All of them would be suitable for Asian skin. And I said, since my name is a household name, well, why wouldn't we call it your sight? It wasn't this elitist approach to beauty, which was, I'm a big fancy brand and you could only find me in Shanghai or Beijing. Her intention was, you could find me everywhere. She actually encouraged everybody. Every woman should be beautiful, should be proud of themselves. If you can change the way you look, you can change anything else. Yusai is absolutely a believer in America and China getting along. Welcome to Shanghai. At the Shanghai Film Festival, which is a global festival, you're the official international ambassador. How did you get involved? You know, the Shanghai Film Festival has been around for a long time. Uh, about eight, nine years ago, we decided that we'll help them, and we invited some very important people to come. I don't think there's anyone who's had a greater impact in bridging the cultures. A key part of that is creating personal relationships between chief executives. For an American trying to do business in China, there are all these different constituencies. You say can really draw them a map. And within just a moment, in a phone call, you walk in with you, Sai, and it's done. And I think that she should get an honorary ambassadorship to foster even more the knowledge about China. I am so happy to see Dr. Kissinger here. Because if it weren't for him, I probably would not be standing here. Only one more auction item, and then I will let you be. Americans are the most generous people in the world. I think they give away, what, $400 billion a year. 
You sigh, they're not paying attention to me. I'm doing my best here. I think that one of the greatest things I learned from America is to be generous. At $3,000, I'm gonna give you the microphone. I've been the target of frequent solicitations for her benefits in Shanghai. Hello, hello, hello. I would appreciate if everybody sits down. That's good, because it shows that she's, again, irrepressible in raising money. Now, anybody who talks, I would assume that you are bidding $1,000, okay? <laughs> She says what she needs to say to raise money. I don't know you guys know much about fashion. I think probably we only know a tenth of what she's really doing. China Institute is certainly an organization that takes most of my time. I'm very grateful for your support because with you, we sold out tonight. <laughs> Kissinger once said, the most important bilateral relationship is the relationship between China and the United States. You make this event into the most glamorous Chinese event of the year. Thank you. At the China Institute, we are not political at all. We are only in, interested in culture. So we do language, we do dance, we do music, business. A fashion gala is not just a fancy party. It really actually celebrates Chinese fashion in this country. I used to say I would bring beauty into China. Now I am ready to bring beauty from China to the world. The very first time I met Yusai, I go in the door and there are these two six foot two very gorgeous women and, and Yusai said, I'm gonna make one of them Miss Universe. Yu Sai is our director in China. Her first year she took over the pageant, her contestant placed in the top five and was actually probably the most talked about contestant during the entire time. I think that a very beautiful woman is a very confident woman. And that's what we train in Miss Universe. We train them to be able to put forth their very best in front of a billion people. It makes perfect sense. Miss Universe is aligned with Operation Smile, an organization that uh, where doctors will travel around the world and uh, perform a very simple operation. You know, a lot of young kids die because they could not suck milk. It's a simple process, it's a simple idea, but so powerful. It changes so many, many lives. I'm Yusai Khan. I believe that children everywhere should be free to grow in health, peace, and dignity. Her real focus and mission has been helping underprivileged children. One of the biggest missions of the United Nations is to ensure parity of education for boys and girls. And Yusai has embraced that and is a constant spokesperson. <laughs> One of my students, graduate assistants, one day came and did some research on her and found she was doing libraries in the middle of very remote areas in China that she's not going to get recognition from. But she did it because she has a huge heart for education. She's a living proof. The, the highest use of capital is not making more money, but to make money for the betterment of life. What you're talking about now would make me say she's an educator. Well, education, education is a very big part of it. My father was an educator. So in a way, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's in, my, in my blood to be an educator. You know, with a country that was so enclosed to, to now, okay, we'll so open, you know, it, it takes a lot of education, a lot of education.